The Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints is losing a record number of its membership. A new report quotes an LDS general authority who says more members are falling away today than any time in the past 175 years. According to a recent Reuters article citing LDS general authority Marlon K. Jensen, for the church as a whole, the record is going in a different direction. Elder Jensen told the news outlet, times have changed and attrition has accelerated in the last five or ten years. So how bad is it getting? Right now the LDS church has over 14 million members across the world. But according to the article, sociologists estimate active membership could be as few as only five million. Drive is when goes on. Turbo Polka. The new Russian fad from I don't know how many years ago. So the video I did, including the John Taylor's vision, I had not seen that vision for since 2016. Because uh, that's when I, uh, I could have even been in 2017 even because uh, yeah it was 2017 because I, <coughs> because I had found out about the total solar eclipse in August 2017 way back in November 4th 2016 by Fox 13 News Utah and uh, knew this was the latter days and uh, as I found it, I, uh, I did, saw in my mind what he was talking about, but didn't make any connections to any of what was a, about to happen. And so this uh, video I did this morning, I was able to go to it read over it, and, oh, hmm, see, Mormons, as I had once believed, believe that John Taylor is a living prophet of Jesus, that Brigham Young was the rightful, true, legitimate successor of Joseph Smith as the president of the Quorum of the Twelve. Yeah, there's more things that I learned, not just researching the latter days, after I knew we were in it. I learned the real church history. And so, yeah, knowing John Taylor's role in the church under Joseph Smith, I now am able to interpret him correctly and correct the errors of interpretation that the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints indoctrinated me with. And so it's not prophecy. He was revealing through dream their plot as uh, this confirms so, yeah season 20 came out on DVD today so it's unclear as to if I'll be able to watch it before 9-11 because I've seen the pattern in my life. <laughs> in 2008, well, we can even go back further. When I left for my mission, uh, Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom was coming out in the theaters. And my mom had uh, told me that I need to get over it because she missed the sound of music when she went on her mission to the Eastern States mission, which was all in Canada for her. <laughs> and 
then I've come to learn that Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom was actually kind of essential to my eternal salvation. <laughs> Molaram Sugaram. <laughs> Kalima Shati Day. No time for love, Dr. Jones. <laughs> I think we can make that the theme song. Uh, yeah, as we uh, would travel uh, to uh, uh, Utah and Idaho, the uh, Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom arcade game was there at uh, Circus Circus in the arcade. And uh, I tried to play that. I got a little bit into the game, but it was a little too complicated for me and didn't have much time to spend to uh, try to work my way through it, but it was a fun game. Not available at Rick's. They did have the uh, TIE Fighters arcade game there at Rick's. There in the Man Wearing Center. They eventually got rid of that when I came home from my mission. They didn't have that anymore. That was stupid of them. And now Rick's is gone, torn down, and some evil apostate school is in its place, over the ruins. I have no idea what it's called. But, uh, yeah, I got getting married, and taken up to Canada, there was uh, a lot of music and movies that, you know, family life took away from me. And uh, I tried to uh, get the VHS tapes of new Disney movies that were coming out. And uh, my uh, Cinderella tape was obviously kidnapped when I was abandoned. And then... Uh, 2008, yep, yeah, I was trying to work my way through Stargate Atlantis, trying to catch up on The Simpsons. The Simpsons was a little easier because they didn't like putting out DVDs, and now they're with Disney that's anti-DVD. So season 21 is the end of The Simpsons for me. Just lame. But, uh, yeah, I was indefinitely incarcerated for six years by the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, who paid and ordered it. You guys have no idea the threat you face. You know, I can tell you, I can show you the receipts, but you still won't believe. You still don't get how evil this church is, how much a threat they are to your lives, not just to me. And all I did was decipher Paleo-Hebrew. I'm a terrorist. <laughs> how dare I decipher Paleo-Hebrew and confirm and show how Joseph Smith was correct with his translations. It's just evil. And so, yeah, the, then uh, I was still able to get stuff with the second marriage, not marriage. And then, yeah, Right before, uh, in uh, 2022, in that June, I uh, was uh, again attacked by orders of the church. And uh, 
betrayed by Judas's all over the place. And Judith's It's unclear as to whether they've fully left me alone now, having destroyed me. But uh yeah, it was more of I didn't have the money. They were trying to murder me. They cut off my money supply, they cut off access to food, and uh, they were uh, tampering with my utilities. It was a full-on attempted murder. Again, all because I sued the church to protect my life. You know, the church, they're bullies. They're terrorist threat bullies, you know, beam and moat. They accuse me of being a terrorist because they're a terrorist. And terrorists always make false accusations and blame victims. And so, yeah, I know exactly what they were doing to me. And they want to live in denialism land and pretend that they're the innocent ones. But no, I was exposing them as a threat. And they needed to stick around for this year. And so, yeah, I was thinking that I was not going to be able to obtain any more stuff. And so the final season of uh, Supergirl, I was able to spend and buy. And so that became a symbol of... my uh, triumph in adversity but now there's other stuff that uh, it's looking like I'm going to miss out on because of 9-11 this year so no I don't want it to happen I would like to be wrong I would like to show that Joseph Smith is a false prophet and the Book of Mormon isn't true I can't. <laughs> so, yeah, I, I've uh, got the 29th, where Flash, the final season, is coming out on DVD, and Blue Blood, season 13, is coming out on DVD. Uh, the Flash movie, Amazon is being butts. They're not wanting to re deliver it on the day that it gets released. So I'm waiting for them to do the right thing on that one. And then the 5th of September, uh, they finally uh, released today Young Sheldon Season 6 on the day it's supposed to be released. So I was able to pre-order that. And then Picard, I got the uh, last week, the final season of Picard. I'm still waiting for the Equalizer Season 3. They're still saying that it won't be delivered on the day it gets released. So i got to wait. And then uh, Cobra Kai on the 12th. <laughs> so frustrating. And yet, if I'm going... If, if nothing's going to happen on the 11th, I do need to have it pre-ordered. But uh, it's just so frustrating. Knowing of what's to come, but it hasn't happened. And so I don't know, because they can still pull a fast one on us. <laughs> and give up the kingdom to prove Joseph Smith a fraud. It's, it's just, is it an irony? Because it's not hypocrisy. To claim your founder is Joseph Smith, that he's a prophet, seer, revelator, and translator, and yet not a single president of Brigham Young's has any of those gifts. <laughs> and so they trash talk Joseph and say, well, you know, he, he doesn't have the gifts of translation. It's just revelation. And then they alter the gifts and what they mean so that they're not scientific based just 
total chaos and pandemonium, dogs and cats living together, mass hysteria. I didn't quote that correctly, did I? But, uh, yeah. So there's lots of things that I can foresee now. Knowing dates. Seeing the end of the tunnel, the light at the end of the tunnel. And uh, uncertain as to whether I will get opportunities that I'm currently doing and would continue to do if nothing were to happen. But I do recognize patterns in my life. And so, this one, Heber C. Kimball, a test, a test, a test, as given by his son, J. Golden Kimball. The foul mouth elder. He was in the first council of 70, and you're going, what's that? That's not the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. There's no first council of 70. <laughs> this is fake news. This is the October conference, 1930. From the conference report. The official document of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. It was seven years after Heber J. Grant incorporated the church, finally, to make it official. Having been fooling Mormons for decades, that the church had not been destroyed by the United States of America in 1887. And so, What's interesting is he says, I think one of the greatest pieces of philosophy in the Bible is where there is no vision, the Mormons perish. And you look at my videos, it's Joseph Smith and the Book of Mormon's visions that I'm giving you. Not a single president of Brigham Young. Not Nelson. None of them. They are silent. And he continues. Uh, where there is no gifts, there is no faith. Did you catch that with what I told you earlier? Not a single one of Brigham Young's presidents have manifested the gifts of prophet, seer, revelator, or translator. Because they don't have faith. They don't believe Joseph. It's a completely different religion. And you don't believe me. Well, here's a living elder of Jesus. <laughs> Aren't you not going to believe him? <laughs> and so, yeah, there has to be Amos 3.7. The prophets have to warn you, and they have to warn you specifically and in advance so that you are properly warned. And there is only one person on the face of this earth who is doing that, and you've already quit listening to him. There is only one person on the face of the earth who has manifested the gifts of prophet, seer, revelator, and translator, and you've quit listening. And he's even tried to give you those gifts. And what have you done with them? <laughs> so frustrating. And so... Yeah, he, wow, he's quoting Deuteronomy. 
he doesn't say it's from Deuteronomy, but I know he's quoting from Deuteronomy. Huh? <gasps> Interesting. <laughs> That's the latter days. I just went over it with you. It's <laughs> it's the false prophet of the latter days, and he's quoting it. And he doesn't realize what he's doing. Or does he? And so, yeah, he says he's now going to quote his, his uh, father from 62 years ago. In May 1868. And so this is Hebrew C. Kimball. Hebrew C. Kimball is the one who I got his document today too. His journal. Finally got his journal. That's been a struggle. Because I was thinking the Kimballs were keeping it a sacred secret from us. Because Wikipedia quotes it wrong. I had found the page way back in 2016-17. But didn't have his journal until now, today. The Gutenberg Project has it available for free online, and I got it. It's mine. I own him. And so, yeah, I could do another video on that with all the other videos I have piled up here. See, before I was attacked in 2020 I had two binders of post-it notes thick overflowing and uh, I let those go so a lot of that information has not been given to you but it's still up here So let's go over Hebrew C. Kimball's prophecy as the enemy who plotted to overthrow Joseph Smith and succeeded with his murder. This is the plot that the Book of Mormon warns us about. And we are now going to go over it after who knows how many years ago that I find previously saw it. Just like John Taylor's vision. After a while, the Gentiles will gather in Salt Lake City by the thousands. And this will be among the wicked cities of the world. Step aside, Las Vegas. A spirit of speculation and extravagance will take possession of the saints. Money, money, money. And the results will be financial bondage with tithing. Because the more money you make as a Mormon, the more tithing you have to pay. <laughs> An army... Huh. Joseph Smith calls it militant that was attacking the church, which was the elders of the church. Hmm. Joseph Smith, the prophet. An army of elders will be sent to the four quarters of the earth. See, this was when they were still keeping everybody in the valley. So you can see that after getting everybody from the four quarters of the earth, he's now saying we will go back out and do missionary work to convert people all over the world. And he says to search out the righteous and warn the wicked of coming events. Mm-hmm. Be my mom. But 
Mormons don't do that, do they? When I went out, and I'm sure it's still the same because the church just released an updated version of the missionary handbook where they can't be racist anymore. <laughs> it's all about Jesus. The Book of Mormon, it's about Jesus, literal history, not a threat warning of the latter days whatsoever. Nope, wrong interpretation of the learning of the Jews. Nope, Jesus. We don't warn anybody. It's all about join our church of Jesus and pay your money. Pay up and pay for your family or you will never see them again in the afterlife. God, and people fall for this. That always disturbed me as a kid. And when I heard that my money isn't going to help the poor and the needy, the sick and the afflicted, I didn't want to pay tithing anymore. What's the point of giving to a church that's filthy rich and is using me? All kinds of religions will be started. No, not really. Still Christianity, Islam, Judaism is still around, but no new religions. I mean, I guess maybe the Hare Krishnas, they're a new age movement. And uh, new branches of Christianity, but not all kinds of religions will be started. Pretty much the church was the newest kid on the block and still remains so to this day. But there were branch offs from Brigham Young. <laughs> and miracles performed that will deceive Mormons if such thing were possible. Yeah, you guys are easily deceived. I mean, seriously, the inverted pentagram of Lucifer, and you can't figure out it's Lucifer's church? Persecution comes next. Come on, just a little sip of Mountain Dew won't hurt. Everybody's doing it. I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. I will not give in to temptation and drink Mountain Dew. <laughs> but I gotta pay for my BYU education. You have to buy some of my underground Mountain Dew. <laughs> Come on, man. You owe me. I don't owe you anything. You have to do me a favor, though. All Latter-day Saints will be tested to the limit. So yeah, it's all about interpretation. Mormons believe they can't watch my video because they'll become apostate. <laughs> they don't get it. Because they're not using science. The church told them. In the manuals at conference, science is evil. And they've replaced science at BYU's with psychology. The religion is psychological rather than science-based, as it is in scriptures. This just this is just abominable, and nobody sees it because so many Mormons are in the field of psychology or in a field that has been taken over by psychology. You know, like my brother in sociology, which has been destroyed by the church. But he was valedictorian at BYU, Travis. <laughs> yeah, that's how worthless his education was. He was valedictorian at BYU in his field of sociology, and it was crap. And the University of Michigan called him on it. And he pulled the religion card. <sighs> I 
And so, yeah, if you've got an actual psychologist who has a degree from BYU, guess what he's doing with his life? He's deceiving people with any videos on YouTube he's doing and making you pay. Well, he's got to have a job somehow, Travis. Can he get a legitimate career rather than a fraudulent one? Oh, because that's what his education was. See, when I was going to school, people were getting jobs unrelated to their education. What happened to that? <laughs> Why are people getting jobs in their education now? <sighs> All right. Many Mormons will apostatize. Those are the ones who left the church, saying, no, this is evil, I'm on out. <laughs> I'm not giving you my money, I'm out. We're apostates. That's how the Mormons perceive us. They don't see them as the apostates. They don't see the beam and moat. They don't see themselves as the stupid ones. Others will stand still, not knowing what to do. Oh, Mormons as fence-sitters? Bruce R. McConkie, can you tell us more about fence-sitting? <laughs> We're not racist anymore. <laughs> Before the temple reaches the square, Our brethren will be imprisoned. This is why Brigham Young, the year before he died, forged Section 132 on polygamy and replaced Joseph Smith's monogamy chapter. The United States was putting pressure on them. This is legal pressure. Brigham Young was in defiance of the laws of the land. He didn't adhere to the Articles of Faith. He didn't put it in a Pearl of Great Price. That wasn't until John Taylor finally decided to publish the Pearl of Great Price. Brigham Young wanted nothing to do with that. You need to know that in context. Until the penitentiary shall be full yeah, of criminal Mormons. And some of them will be removed to other penitentiaries. And so, yeah, you see the beam in the moat with Operation Rio Grande. Oh, we know how to fix the homeless problem in Utah. Let's lock them up. <laughs> and so they moved prisoners to other prisons to lock them up. And jails, it's all the same thing. It's time served. <sighs> jails are prisons. It's illegal. You cannot punish somebody if they have not had due process. But the jails are punishments. It counts as time served. But you're innocent until proven guilty. Not. The Constitution is in danger. And our government is the enemy. Not the Dems. Both. Mothers would weep for their husbands, and children would cry for their fathers. Some would die. Yeah, John Taylor, in prison. And sorrow would fill the hearts of the Latter-day Saints. The church is still true. It's still true. <laughs> when the temple roof is on, the persecution will lessen. Yeah. Because you're not in prison anymore. <laughs> so you can continue to build. <laughs> He's 
just brilliant as a prophet. And when the temple is completed, the power of the evil one will be shut out. What's that keystone again? Who does it belong to? Are you sure he's shut out? And not shut in? Beam and moat. The prayers of the saints will then be heard. Come on, Jay Golden, get to the latter days. Right. The judgments of God will be poured out upon the wicked. Okay, here we go. To the extent that our elders from far and near will be called home. I did the video in 2020. <laughs> it only lasted for two weeks. <laughs> Nelson had the perfect opportunity. We are fulfilling prophecy of Heber C. Kimball. We're bringing the missionaries home. This is the time of the Exodus, Mormons. Gather to Zion. Nope. <laughs> he murdered you. <sighs> and so, yes, the gospel is supposed to be taken from the Gentiles. Because the Gentiles have rejected Jesus and the payment of tithing. And so they're supposed to be, it's supposed to be taken from them. Nope. Got to get that money. But this is what I saw in my mission. New York, New York. I was in another elder's apartment. Uh, bed -Stuy, I think it was. And uh, the two elders that we were waiting to return to their apartment came running in the door. The one elder had pulled a naughty no-no <laughs> and had broken up a drug transaction between two rifle gangs. See, we were older than the missionaries now, by one year. <laughs> and so, yeah, they immediately contacted the mission president, and he shut down the mission in that area for at least three months before reopening it again because of the threat to the missionaries. And so... What Heber is talking about is a people refusing to join. But that's not all. We go out on missions as people don't believe us anyway. So no, he's talking about the missionaries hunted down. He just won't say it. This is what happens in scriptures is that a people who don't believe and enforce that disbelief with murder, yeah, it's a big hint you need to get out. But the church won't do that. The church thinks that, oh, we can go and, and make them better people. <laughs> we can do deals with the devil. Because we've got Jesus on our side. No, they're framing you. They're setting you up for murder. And so, the western boundaries of the state of Missouri. Independence. Right close by, next to Jackson County, Missouri. Which is in Jackson County, Texas. 
or Jackson City, Texas. Isn't it Jackson? Am I getting the right city? Jackson City, Missouri, Jackson City, Kansas. Is that what it is? Will be swept up, swept so clean as its inhabitants that, as President Young tells us, no, he was quoting Joseph from the 19 July 1840 that Brigham Young refused to have published in his Doctrine and Governance. <laughs> because of what he tells about Brigham Young. <sighs> but uh, it's about the yellow dog wagging his tail. And so he, he knew about that 19 July 1840. He was one of them the condemned by Joseph Smith in 19 July 1840. And so he's now giving credit to Brigham on this. And he says, Before that day comes, the day that shall burn as an oven, the abomination of desolation, the saints will be put to the test that will try the very best of them. We need a yellow dog, don't we? Thumbnail picture. Yellow dog. We're not doing the dog song. It's so annoying. I don't know why they even bothered to release it. But that's another one that Disney won't release on DVD. <clears throat> Turner and Hooch. The season. The TV series. So annoying. I really, I had a Disney channel until my funding was cut off and then I had to cut off Disney. And so I was watching it. I liked it. It was cool. Especially the female love interest in the show. Because I'm a big fan of uh, James Belushi's K-9 series, movie series. But, uh, uh, see, I was born in the year of the dog, which is the dog star of Sirius, which is the star of Horus. You're not listening. Why do I bother? Before that day comes, test, a test, a test, the pressure on Mormons will become so great that the righteous Mormons will cry unto Jesus day and night until deliverance comes. You're going to be saved, Mormons. You'll be caught up to meet Jesus in the mushroom cloud. So, I think that's it. Because then he's doing 1856. Talking about what Heber C. Kimball said in the endowment house. We think we are secure here in the chambers of the everlasting hills where we can close the doors of the canyons against mobs in the United States of America, the wicked and the vile, who have always beset us with violence and robbery, because you were Danites who were. But I want to say to you, my brethren, the time is coming when we will be mixed up in these now peaceful valleys to the extent that it will be difficult to tell the face of a Mormon from the face of an enemy apostate who leaves the church. <laughs> you have to read between the lines here. And so this is the time to look for the great sieve. 
did that one yesterday, didn't they? Or was it two days ago? Separation of the the goats from the sheep, the weed from the tares, with the one black sheep on the thumbnail picture. <laughs> that was awesome. Yeah. And this is where I told you that Nelson, he's not separating out the Mormons except by being extremist. They come out and say, Adopted children of gay couples cannot be baptized. So what happened? People left the church. When Oaks says women will never have priesthood office. And Nelson has Kate Kelly excommunicated. What? happened an exodus with the social media that was able to expose a lot of what has been found out about the church and their lies what happened a mass exodus of 10 million Mormons who just say, I'm out. This is what he's talking about. The 10 million Mormons are the apostates. They have been weeded out of the church. And the Mormons who stay see that and go, I'm more righteous. And that reinforces their self-fulfilling prophecy that the church is true. And they refuse to study. They refuse to watch my videos, especially to the end. And they don't realize they're being bundled by Nelson for burning. Mormons are the tares. Mormons are the goats. Mormons are the chaff. Mormons are the foolish virgins. And they refuse to believe it and accept it. Because the church teaches them to use fallacy arguments to be anti-scientific and so what Hebrew C. Kimball is talking about is how he's going to purge the church and destroy it and then take it into the context of John Taylor's talk where he doesn't say it in his dream but what are we doing in Missouri? Utah is destroyed. He generalizes it, saying not only New York has been burned to ash, but other places in the United States, north, south, east, and west. But he sees... The Twelve Apostles in Missouri building the Zion Temple. He leaves out the angry dog that nobody is making an arcade game of. That would be awesome. Because apparently that owner, master, needs to use the game <laughs> to learn how to calms their dog down and make it a happy dog. <laughs> and so he then goes on to finish what he said before he goes on to talk about President George Q. Cannon. The church 
has before it many close places through which it will have to pass before the work of God is crowned with glory. The overthrow of the United States of America. The difficulties will be of such a character that the Mormon, male or female, who does not possess a personal knowledge. Yeah, we don't use that wording in the church anymore. <laughs> it's just a spiritual witness now. Or witness will fall. And so who doesn't have the personal knowledge? Mormons. <laughs> You're being bundled up to be burned because you don't have a personal knowledge and you don't believe the one and only one who does to warn you. <sighs> if you have not got this testimony, Knowledge? What? No, spiritual witness feeling is testimony. And Packer says, you get it by saying it. <laughs> by speaking I create. Abracadabra, I have a testimony. <laughs> you must live right and call upon the Lord. And cease not until you obtain it. Mm-hmm. Yep. So he said knowledge, but then led you astray, telling you to keep praying until you get knowledge. That's not how you get knowledge. The time will come when no Mormon, male or female, will be able to endure on mommy and daddy's borrowed light or your peers light or the prophets lies claiming to be light each will have to be guided by knowledge but he says light within themselves if you do not have the knowledge that Jesus is the Christ. <laughs> How can you stand? <sighs> there is no Jesus Christ. That's the whole funny thing. It's in the Bible. They tell you he doesn't exist. The Book of Mormon. 3rd Nephi, 2023. I'm not real. <laughs> Mormon isn't real history. <laughs> well, Mormons will not stand. Do you believe it? <laughs> Perfect ending. Brilliant! <laughs>